Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have had no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her, who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. The Annunciation that we celebrate today is filled with both mystery and drama. The whole universe waited and yearned for the yes that would restore what had been lost through Adam and Eve. Hadn't our fathers and mothers of the Old Testament also said yes to God, Abraham and Sarah, Moses, Isaiah, Esther, and many others as well? They did say yes to follow God's will. However, their yes was unable to undo the curse of Satan's I will not serve and Adam and Eve's no to God. Their yes was a preparation of God's promise of fulfilling Genesis 3.15. I will put enmity between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Then we encounter someone unexpectedly from a backward little village called Nazareth. It is an undesirable little village with a bad reputation. Can you imagine the sign at the entrance of the village? Welcome to Nazareth. Nothing good comes from here. Could this drab little village really be the place of our salvation? The Gospel tells us yes. Angel Gabriel, a messenger of God, visits a young girl of about 15 named Mary, asking her to be the mother of God. After all is explained to her, the whole universe holds its breath waiting for Mary to say yes. How long we have waited. Even the dead are waiting. Then she says yes. 
and the curse begins to break. It unravels. It begins to fall apart. Jesus is conceived and our redemption is soon at hand. The I will not serve of Lucifer is replaced by Mary's gentle and firm declaration, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to thy word. A darkened fallen angel tells the virgin Eve that God is keeping things from her and Adam. He brings confusion and sows the seed of doubt. Mary's yes to God's divine will and plan allowed her spouse, the Holy Spirit, to bring forth the seed of our salvation, the seed of our redemption, Jesus Christ. Darkness, disorder, chaos, confusion, and doubt are replaced with light, order, clarity, and confidence. Our faith lays it out for us. We either say yes to God or we say no to him. There is no middle ground. There is not a third choice. There is not D, all of the above. We are for Jesus or we are against him. Genesis chapter 3 revolves around the no of Adam and Eve and how they, and now we, experience the immediate consequences of their no. They are filled with pride. Darkness takes over. They now know evil and suffering. They have fear and they hide from God. They have anger and they blame each other. They do not take responsibility for their actions. And they are naked. They see the faults, sins, and disorder of each other glaringly. Luke chapter 1, today's gospel, revolves around the yes of Mother Mary. Mary throughout her life says yes to God. Her yes brings us salvation, new life, grace, restoration, and will open the gates of heaven with Jesus' death and resurrection. Mary's yes brings us all we need for life's problems, troubles, and worries. Her yes brings us Jesus, the answer to all the difficult questions we struggle with. Even when Mary watched her son beaten, mocked, made fun of, dragged through the streets of Jerusalem, forced to carry the instrument of his own death, those swords that would wound and pierce her heart, she showed us and pointed us to Jesus Christ. He is, he is and will always be the answer. And though filled with sorrow of a mother for her son, Mary never doubted God's plan. It is providential and a grace that we celebrate today the mystery of the Annunciation just a few days before the start of Holy Week, the holiest week of the year. We have another opportunity if our lives have been filled with too many no's to say yes once again to Jesus. Some of the ways we may say yes to Jesus is by participating and responding during Holy Mass through our own personal prayer and fasting, reading the scriptures, and loving Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament and through simple, humble, acts of love to people all around us. A very powerful yes to Jesus is participating in the sacrament of reconciliation and giving a humble and honest confession. During Holy Week, we can also say yes to Jesus by walking with Mary as Jesus enters on Palm Sunday, remaining with her throughout the Passion, watching with her under the cross and sitting with her as she waits three days for his resurrection and return. 
in the mystery of the Annunciation. Mary's yes confronts and topples Lucifer's Adam and Eve's no. And the drama of salvation, we also must respond. There are only two choices, yes and no. Be not afraid, but choose wisely. Regina Jenny, letare, alleluia, qui aque menu misti portare, alleluia, resurrexit sicut dixit, alleluia, ora pro nobis deum, alleluia.